There is nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling transmission. We are live. We are back. We're back. After three months. Last, it? Yeah. It's been that long? Last show was ICAF. That was in July. So. That was, wasn't it? That's a long time. Golly. You know, I, I guess they want us back, you know? I guess so. I thought they canceled our show there for a second. <laughs> I thought so too. They just like didn't talk about it. Like, oh yeah, those guys? No, no, no. no. Don't, don't, don't worry about those guys. <laughs> so we'll let some people uh, start filling in. Looks like we got Tamara in. Awesome, awesome. She's a constant, constant watcher. Derek, what's up? How's what's it going? Up? Cool. So, what's on tap for tonight? Well, we've got a pretty good show. I'm not. I don't, don't want to hype it up too much, but we got a pretty good show. Oh yeah. So, CFX grips, <laughs> and we're gonna teach you guys how to custom make the carbon fiber grips. So, Start to finish. Absolutely. So CFX grips, I'm sure all of you guys have heard of them before. It's uh, it, basically it's a um, you start with a it, it's basically an arbor type material almost. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's, uh, and then they put a carbon fiber uh, sleeve over top of it. Right. And what you come up with is a grip that's um, super lightweight. Oh yeah. The texture, it's not uh, it's not exactly super smooth, but it's not rough. Right. It's just got a nice grip to it. You know? For sure. But it actually is one of the lightest grips on the market that you can buy these days. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, you know, cork's very light. Of course, EVA and, and the polymer, like a wind grip and stuff, you know, they're they're pretty light. But these are, like, in a league of their own light. Yeah. So, and, and the good thing is, is, you know, you can buy these CFX factory grips. And, and you know, we carry them in 11 and 3 quarters eight and three quarters and of course we've got four grips and, and rear grips that fit various real seats we've got those those guys that Megan for us do an absolutely great job and uh, I think we get a lot of good feedback on it oh, yeah, absolutely. you know for, for people that want something that's kind of cool I know I built one uh, with a fly grip on a half wells for somebody that wanted a really really lightweight a three weight and he was gonna fish up in the mountains and stuff and, right. and he loved it too so um, what we wanted to do is obviously they have now because of the popularity of them and people wanting some different shapes and different things like that, they got a do it yourself kit. Yes, they've come out with all the, all the four components you need to make your own grips. So you have sure. the foam core, you have the carbon fiber sleeve, the, uh, we call them clips, the sleeve clips, they yep. go on each end of your grip, and then uh, the epoxy to, uh, to glue the sleeve onto the foam core. Yeah, so really, it's it's one of those deals that you don't have to piece all this together and go like, oh, you know, oh, I got some epoxy around here somewhere, and you got a hose clamp that I could borrow. Or, there's, it's all in the kit. Yes. So um, it really, really makes it easy. And then of course, this being their, uh, they call it a vibra core because they tout this, and and I can attest to that. Um, the core is a is a special material that's not an insulator. So some people think that. You know, with this core and then the sleeve over it, it's going to dampen your sensitivity. It actually heightens it. So it is so light and it, and it does come together as, as like one solid piece. So it, it's very, very sensitive. It is. So what they do is they give you this sleeve here and then you can put it on a mandrel. You can put it in a lathe. You can put it in the power wrapper. Um, we're going to actually put it in a drill and you can actually cut it up with just a razor knife. So surprisingly you know this stuff you can sand it down very easily you can ream it very easily oh, yes. but once you put that sleeve over it and you know set it up with the epoxy that they provide you it's hard yeah i mean we super, had a question i saw it earlier we had a question when we put up the event for the facebook lab one guy asked okay. if it was durable or not oh yeah and <laughs> trust us yeah this carbon fiber sleeve especially when it's glued on to your your uh, foam core is extremely durable sure and of course it's super easy to cut with just regular scissors you don't need anything fancy to cut this but it's all based off of when you glue it up and it that epoxy sets right it really really becomes 
rock solid. So, you want to get into it? Yeah, you might as well. So, a few tools we got. Chris mentioned earlier, <clears throat> you need a, uh, a 3 8 mandrel, which we uh, we sell here. We have them in all different sizes. But the idea of this foam core is 3 8 So, he'll get that ready. And so, by the way, obviously, uh, he mentioned earlier, we sell this in a kit. The four components you need, we sell this in a kit. And we'll have these on sale, 25% off. And we're going to give some away later, so... Hang tight. And we sell them individually as well, so if you need more carbon fiber or more foam cores or right. we have that individually as well. Exactly. So we'll post links in the uh, in the comments. So he's gonna start with the mandrel. So this foam core is 15 inches long. So you know honestly, especially if you're doing like split grips, you could probably get I don't know, maybe what, three or four, maybe maybe two to three grips out of this easily? Yeah, for sure. At least a you know a well, full set everybody, to your rod. Right, yeah, a full set. Because everybody's doing, you know. They'll do a rear, or they'll do a, uh, you know, a, a rear grip, a fighting butt, or they'll do a full length rear, and then they'll do a fighting butt. So, all right, let me show you how easy this is to cut. <clears throat> so I'm going to take our Bentford 6100 here, nice. That's and uh, got that chucked in. Why don't you hand me that razor knife? So um, if you've got the volume turned up loud, this. Might be a little loud. So. Yeah, so turn it down just a little bit. A little bit. So we're just showing you this because if you don't have a power wrapper and you don't have a lathe, you can actually do this on a drill. So I actually shape some of my cork grips at home with the drill like this. And you can just lay it in a stand like that. And I like the core to turn away from me. So I've got it set on the drill to turn away from me, and then I'm just going to mark where I want it and lay this in here, and then we're going to cut it. So. So it's that easy. So there it is. And then you've got it cut, and then you can take it, put it back on there, and shape it up, and you can make it, you know, in various lengths and, and, and different shapes that you want. So, I'm going to set that down. Okay. So, step one, you've got it cut. And of course, you can go through and cut them in different lengths. Um, you can make a long, full length rear that you can actually create tenons, or you can just come in and create short uh, rear split grips, or you can create a foregrip. So, now we are going to. Are you going to use that one? Yeah, that's right. All right, cool. That's what we're for. Yep, cool. And I'll start mixing up the epoxy. Okay. Let me see that happen. Mm -hmm. So, what are you going to do? You can put an arbor on there? Yeah. Because what we're using is, if you notice, Chris used just one of the um, like the RDS stands that comes with your rod dryer to, uh, to use to kind of keep that mandrel stable while he cuts it. And then we're also going to be using the RDS dryer to, um, he's going to put a arbor, so this will actually chuck, the mandrel will chuck, into the, um, into the chuck itself. Yep. And then we're going to apply the epoxy over top of the, the uh, foam core. Yep. And now it's it's not necessary to put it in. You know, for example, when you're using Pro Coat, you need to put um, you know your rod in an RDS. It has to keep you know uh, it's got to keep turning because it's self leveling. This stuff does not necessarily need to self level because of you're going to actually slip. The, uh, the carbon fiber sleeve over it, but it really just helps you get a good even coat on it. So that's why we're going to put this in the RDS. I think that's about right. Yeah. This will get our first question of the night, Chris. You wanna... Can you put this over existing cork grips that show wear and tear? We are in the process of testing that. Um, it's been a situation that I don't know how well that this is going to bond to the cork. Um, from what we've seen so far, this core does not really absorb a ton of the epoxy. So I think you're going to be able to. Um, that's something that we'll be happy to test for you um, and, and get back to you. Uh, but it, it's one of those deals that you're going to want to make sure that it bonds well. So if you do it, I would try to sand it. I would make sure to clean it because remember, you're going to need a clean surface for that to bond to. Now, if it's pitted, that, that's not a problem. 
you don't have to sand it smooth. We just need to make sure that if it's got fish slime or if it's got you know dirt and, and things like that on it, that's what needs to come off of it. Right. So we need to make sure that the bond is 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 good on that. Plus, we're going to also need to make sure that if the grip is an existing grip, I'll do this for an example. So if you've got an existing grip here, the edge is going to be something that you're going to have to pay attention to. So because that your grip is already mounted on your seat, um, for example, the way that this is, so here's what the grip looks like. You can see that the edge is rolled over, right? So when the edge is rolled over, it makes a nice edge and fits right up to that real seat. The problem is, is that when you're mounted here on your rod, you can make a good clean edge on this side, but you might not be able to make as clean, clean of an edge on this side. So Tim, that's the only, the only two things. I, I just want to make sure that this epoxy will bond to that cork properly. Again, it's probably just based on your prep. I mean, as, as long as your prep is good, it's just like anything else. If you're painting a car or you're painting anything else, the prep, it's all in the prep. Right. So the other thing is, it's just making that clean edge. So that's, those are the only things that I would worry about, but um, we can certainly get back to you on that. We can test it here yeah. and let you know. And then that way uh, we can, you know. And if not, there's alternatives such as you know, if the wind makes a, uh, the rod wrap, the, right. the tape that you can use, or shrink tubing, there's a lot of different options. Yeah, use. exactly. So, I mean, in reality, too, um, if you've ever seen some of our videos where we replace grips, where we cut the fighting butt off, and we cut a rear grip off, and we, and we bring it up from this side, you know, there's, there's really no reason that you can't do that and cut cork and cut the fighting butt off and either replace it with EVA or, or wind or, or even one of these. Uh, or even cork, really. You would just have to arbor it up. So there's there's a few there's a few options there. So all right. So Hunter's got us spinning. So what I got is um, the epoxy kit is actually a five to one ratio. So I know most rod building epoxies out there are one to one. Right. So be very sure you guys mix this five to one, and it's very easy because you got one bottle that's a lot bigger than the other. Easy enough. They come with syringes and then also there's self-sealing caps inside of the bottles themselves. Uh, so the guys at CFX made this super easy. Yeah, that's one of those products. That's a, a BCSI. I think everybody that uh, buys from us a lot, that buys uh, the Pro Coat and uh, Threadmaster, any of the finishes have come to love those yes. because now, you know, your syringes can just live in the top of that. and. Uh, it's awesome. You don't have to keep pulling them out and putting the caps on and stuff like that. So, all right, so we have a few more minutes here. Mix this all up. Right. You got your brush. Good. You got a brush going. So Chris, he just like I said earlier, put an arbor in this, so we have it in our chuck and our RDS. Yep. We've got it spinning. All right. So let's apply this epoxy now. So all I got is just a disposable brush. You can use any brush you want to, honestly. And what you want to do is apply a, what we fear, a generous, yeah. even coat. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we noticed that um, between the core that's fairly porous and the carbon fiber sleeve, if you don't get enough of the epoxy on there, it doesn't really soak into this weave enough. And it, it just doesn't give you quite the bond that that you would want. So make sure that when you put it on, and this stuff is is very very viscous. It's it's pretty liquid. I mean, it's not like water, but it's it's not like um, you know. I would say it's thinner than Pro Coat. Yes, right? it is. Yeah. I mean, it, it's going to be thinner than a rod finish. So the good thing is, is you don't have to be super delicate. This, right? right. All, all you're doing is you're coating this back and forth and you're just making sure that it is even that it's covered. Yep. And one thing too, you know, Chris showed you guys how to cut, you know, this, these sections of length. What we can also do is, you know, you can sand it to any shape you want to. Right. You know, you can make your own floor grips, you know, have it paper, taper to the front. Yeah. And you'll see later we've got one of these that we did earlier and uh, that's a, just a four grip. You can kind of see here as, as he's doing that, you can kind of see here how much you need to hang over. Um, we did notice as a what not to do, 
So our first trial run. Yeah, well, you know, we wanted to we wanted to see how close we could cut it. So we did one of these yesterday, right? And this is good and cured and everything. And you can see how close of an edge here we were cutting it. And you can see that it does the weave actually on the edges does come start to come apart like if you were to cut a rope. So that does start to come apart. Now, if you don't leave enough on on one end, you can see what happens there. So that's an issue, right? There's no way that you can crimp that down, and that's that's going to cause a problem, and you're not going to be able to finish that off. Now, if this happens to you, because this is cured and it is epoxied and bonded to this core, you can actually cut this. So you could put it in your lathe and take a razor knife and actually lay it to it and cut through it. So what it would do is it would... Uh, it would create an edge like this. So there's an edge there that has actually been cut off, whereas that is an edge where it's been tapered and wrapped tightly. So depending on what kind of grip you're using, depending on what you want to use it for, um, if you do booger one up, uh, you, you can cut it off. So that, that's a good way to, to kind of save it there. But cool. what you think? All right, so what we did, we have an even coat across the entire grip and then also guys don't forget your both ends make sure you coat both ends and i usually do a little bit more on on the sides than i even do on the top itself because you really want a good bond to yeah. both sides yeah absolutely so we got a question that just came in hot off the press derek asked does it come in lengths greater than 15 inches actually the cfx one itself does not that's the longest one that we carry okay. but we do have a pack bay version, which we might have to dig up the part number four. Okay. But it does exist at 30 inch length. 30 inch length, there it is. Off screen, there we go. Appreciate it, guys. All right. So, Derek, hopefully that answers your question, and we'll get the guys on the background to get all those part numbers up. Yep. All right. So, if you've got a two man team here, or if you can round up your, uh, you know, significant other to hold this thing. What we're going to do is we are going to make sure that there is some hangover, right? Now keep in mind, this acts like an accordion slash Chinese finger trap thing. You can see how I can manipulate the width on this, right? Or I can pull it tight and it's thin. So you need to make sure that you have about the width that you want. And then we're going to let this hang over some. And probably even cheat just a little bit because we're live. <laughs> So now we're just going to take just regular old scissors. Just the regular old ones. These are not fancy. So we're just going to cut that, and now you've got that piece. You want to pull that bad boy out? Turn our RDS off. Now I recommend using, get you some nitrile gloves out. I noticed that this stuff does not react to latex, but just because I like changed my own oil in my truck and I do some other stuff, I use the nitrile gloves. So we're going to do this and we're going to expand this out. Okay. You can actually open and I'll open the mouth of it here on both sides and just, just go slow, just manipulate it just a little bit. And then you can actually compress it down to widen it out, and it will act like a finger trap. Yep. Because that happened to me yesterday. <laughs> so real quick, Michael asks, does the sleeve come in other colors or designs? As of right now, no. No. But, but. if the CFX guys are watching, Michael, maybe that's pretty maybe. good. I like it. I like where your head's at. So right now it's just this one. So now what we're going to do, here, set it up there. Okay. So we are going to slide this down over the top. We're going to get it centered. And then we're going to try to do our best to make sure that that is, that the weave is straight, just for aesthetics. If the weave's not perfectly straight, it's not going to hurt anything. But you can see I've got 
uh, epoxy coming through this, which is what you want because you want this to, you don't need it to be fully wetted out, but you do want it to come through onto the glove. Now we're going to make sure that we create a nice edge. So if you can see it, I'm taking it, I'm spinning it, and I'm also compressing it down. So you can see here how thin this is now, because Hunter also put finish, I say finish, epoxy against the face of this, which is going to allow it to bond to the face. So now we're going to take the wire clamp there. Hold that for me, this one. So if you've got a bench vise, this is great. If you don't have a, uh, a second partner here. So we're going to widen this. We're going to open it up so that when we grab this sleeve, we actually don't puncture the carbon fiber weave. And it's not an issue, it's just it snags it, and it's kind of a pain. So one trick is, is if you actually take it and spin it, Okay, so if you can imagine, you know, when you get the old school bubblegum wrapper style where you can take it and twist it, don't take it and twist it like completely twisting it like you're shutting a Jolly Rancher or a piece of gum, but to help that weave actually compress, you can actually take it and twist it slightly as you take this hose clamp and spin it because otherwise, when that hose clamp comes shut, it will grab into the weave on the carbon fiber and then it's just kind of a pain. But the good thing is you don't have to rush with this. This is not going to cure in 10 minutes. So if you do get a, a little piece of carbon fiber in your hose clamp, just pull it back out and manipulate it back around. There is no rush with this. Right. So, Which is actually a question Martin asked, what's the set time for the epoxy? I would say full cure time is probably at least 48 hours, but you can, they're easily, they, they're set up and not tacky within probably 20 to 24 hours easily. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, we did it, we did some of these on Tuesday and we came in Wednesday and they were good to go. And the building was, you know, in the mid seventies. Right. So, all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to work from one side to the other. Now we're going to clamp that side down tightly. You don't want to bust that that clamp but you want it tightly because when you turn this over you're actually going to work against that clamp and snug all this up because what that's going to do is that's going to help tighten everything up. How are we doing off camera boss? Good? Fantastic. Another question real quick. Brandon yep. asks, do, we, do they make a pre-made grip? This is the SK2C. Oh, not a good question. I don't nope. think they do. Not yet. But uh, we need to we need to get with them. Make their own. Yeah, but since we're showing you how to custom make your own, <laughs> you could buy the kit. You got it, bro. <laughs> or maybe you could win the kit. I mean, that'd be a great. All right, so here's another one. We're just doing the other side now. We're getting her locked down, making sure it's a snug fit. Cool. All right. Cool. He's got it pitched up, and then that's it. And this does not have to keep spinning or anything like that. No, it's no, that does not need to go back in the rod dryer. Nope, it can if you want to, but we're yeah. just set it down now. Or you I would, just set it aside. Yeah, I would say like you know at least elevate it. Don't let it like you know lay on your table or anything right. like that. Yeah, at don't least, do this on your yeah. grandma's dining room table. Exactly. Yeah, just like as we say everything else, don't do it on the dining room table. So Michael's got another great question. Did you wax the arbor? We, any time that where you're going to glue anything to a mandrel, and I'm just assuming that when you say arbor, you're meaning mandrel. Man, yeah, Anytime we glue cork rings or anything else to mandrels, we do wax them. We do clean them. You know, if you've, re if you've used them a couple of times, you can come over them with like steel wool and then re-wax them. But... You do need to make sure that you prep your mandrels. They do not come prepped from us. Right. Uh, they do come drilled for a lathe with a, uh, for what, your center, whatever you call it. But do wax it. That's a, that's a great question. 
Mostly gonna have to. Brett asks, is, does, is the epoxy coming through the carbon fiber? Yes, it does. Yeah. Now, it's, and obviously Chris showed you on the glove, his, you know, his hands were wet from the epoxy, but it does not give, now don't get the wrong idea, it doesn't give the look, you know, of that epoxy on the grip itself. Right, you know, it's, it's, it's not it's like a clean. clear coat. No, 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 it's clean. You, will right. not, you don't have to go back, you know, as soon as you put the epoxy or put the sleeve on and clean this up whatsoever. Right. It, it, when it comes through, it, it will clean itself up. You don't have to do anything until after. Correct. It's, it's not going to build up on the outside of this where you're going to have to come back in 30 minutes and wipe it and clean it. You know, it's not like if you glue a real seed in a grip and then you've got areas where the epoxy is seeping out yes. and you've got to clean it up. Nope. It's, it's not like mm -hmm. that. Um, so, and we'll get to another part of that in a minute, but you will see, you can hear there's texture. So you can hear it, it's, there is texture to that. So it, it does come through it, but it doesn't, it doesn't come through it and build up to where it's messy. And it also doesn't come all the way through it to where it's like a clear coat. Right. You know, when you see like uh, a carbon fiber part on a car that's been cleared over, that is something that you have to come back in and then add pro coat or some kind of spar varnish or something back over it if you just wanted there to be depth and a clear over it. Right. So. so, yeah, for the giveaways, we'll be announcing that towards the end of the show. So, you yeah. guys, you guys got to hang on. Hang you gotta on. Hang, hang tight. tight. Hang tight. So, this Tomorrow was asking. Let's get to that one too before we get away. Can I use here. a zip tie instead of a hose clamp? If you, I, if you yeah. can grip that. You mean zip tie? Yeah, I would say yes, you can. I think you can. I would say you're probably not going to get a, a clean of an edge. Right. But. Just because it's not going to grab that as tightly. If you buy the kit, it's, it's, you the get clamps, a bunch of them in it. Yeah, yeah. The clamps come with the kit. So yeah, would, for sure. If you're going to buy anything, the, the kit, especially 25% off, is the best way to go. Get everything inclusive for the best deal. You can't be. For there. sure. Uh, can it be used on EVA grips also? Uh, again, we are going to go through and we're going to test some of this stuff because I think it can. I think you're going to be able to go over EVA, that you're going to be able to go over cork and things like that because of the way that it bonds. But I don't want to tell you 100% absolutely yes because there's some things that we haven't done personally. Right. Um, you know, if, if I had done it personally, uh, I could say yes, but, but I haven't just walked around the warehouse and just strung the carbon fiber over everything we've got here. But we can, we can certainly do, do yeah. that. So, so after we get, can we get one more question real quick? Yeah, let's do this last question for Freddie. So is the epoxy, so the epoxy isn't visible when it dries. No, it is not. You cannot see the epoxy. You cannot see the epoxy no. after you put the sleeve on. It, it's virtually invisible. Yep. And that's why it's, it's uh, you know, the viscosity of it's so thin right. is the advantage. Correct. It's, like I said, it's not going to create a outer layer of sheen or clear coat or anything like that. All it is there is to absorb into it and bond it to uh, the core. So, all right, let's set this aside. Yeah, so after that, you give that at least probably overnight to dry. Yeah, I give it overnight. You come so back. now we're going to come back and we're going to pull these hose clamps off. And if you're delicate, you can probably reuse them, but... Let's just pull these off here. Now, once you have this pulled off, we're going to cut these clean <coughs> off so that they'll fit up against the real seat or they will also, uh, you can just add a winding check or you can just go from there. So let's, oh, let me put this in a drill. Get back out the Benford 6100. Oh, wait a second. We got our antenna Allen on the wall here. We get power tools involved in here. We got to make sure we... So Brandon asked, how thick is the carbon fiber? Uh, just wondering if it's, how do you get the perfect fit? Um, I'm not sure if you're talking about the diameter of it or... I'm thinking like the thickness the of... The thickness of it? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. We're probably going to have to relay that to the CFX guys. Yeah. Because the other issue is, is it depends on how much you compress it, and we've compressed it in various, various ways, just like this. But we've also, which we'll show you in a minute, we put heat shrink over it, and it actually compressed it more. So it's going to vary, unfortunately. Um, That's the best part of rifle. You just got to experiment, yeah. try different things, and see what you come up with. 
All right, so we're going to cut this bad boy. Again, we are going to take the drill and we're going to make sure that it spins away from you. And we're going to take a razor knife. Please don't use like a, a, a one-sided razor blade that you hold here. No. Don't, don't do that. Let's be safe. Turn your volume down. Yeah, exactly. All right, so we're going to set this against it. side. sure you've got a sharp blade for that. Um, just like with anything, having a good sharp blade uh, is, is key. Let me pull this out. Alright, and you saw there came off nice because you prep your mandrel. So, now that's what, you know, you cut your little ponytails off and <clears throat> You cut those little guys off, and then you're left with a nice, clean edge. Hopefully you can see this, just like that. <laughs> so anyway, you got it cut clean, and then now you're ready to ream out and put it on the rod. Perfect. Done. All right. Well done. Cool. All right, so it's over. We got, yeah, all right. All right, thanks for watching. No. Uh, try to move things closer to the camera when doing them if you can. Yeah, great. That was <laughs> nice to us. Uh, Andrew, you know, we're starting to get more advanced here, and we've got like a teleprompter screen, and we got people walking around, and we got better lighting. Don't say so, this out. yeah, right? I'm Ron Burgundy? Yeah. So, all right, uh, Andrew, if you don't top coat, will it fray? No. It's not going to. It's not going to. Well, if you, yeah, if you don't put a coat over the top of your cured, I'm assuming, so this is cured, and it's nice and hard, you're saying, you're asking, if you put a top coat on it, is that going to help keeping it to fret, right? Right, now I would say no. No, and it's, 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 it's personal preference, because a lot of people leave it exactly like it is, and that's how the regular That's how they come. That's how right. they come. But some people will take either the same epoxy that you used to to put the sleeve on there, right? They'll use that to top coat, or you can use um, any rod epoxy. Pro coat works. You can put, you know, one or two. You can use a uh, yeah, a varnish, a varnish. like a, a spar varnish. Example coming. So, hey, we got an example coming. All right, yeah. oh, the guy behind the scenes working. All right, so this is a good example of why it will not fray. Yes. So this is a grip that we have that fits in the aero seat. Now, if you're going to put it in an aero, I would recommend not rolling it over. So if you can see, that's what it looks like when it rolls over. That's what it looks like when it rolls over. That is cut flush, okay? When it's cut flush, you actually get a more consistent outer diameter. And I think that's probably what... Um, was it Derek or I can't remember? He was asking about the diameter of this. Right. So you're actually going to get a better consistent outer diameter that you can put in an arrow reel seat if you cut it flush, but this will not fray. So you got it coming in? Oh, look out. Mail call. There it is. Cool. So that, I think you can see. I'm going to try to rotate here, get a little, get a little sheen in. Are we going to zoom in on this? camera guy, old camera face guy back there. So this is what happens when you actually top coat it. Is that good? So if you want a smoother, a little bit slicker finish? Yeah, this is, I mean, that that's as slick as you're going to get. That feels like glass. Uh, and it's a really, really cool way to do it. But you can see there it is against what the factory one looks like. Right. 
So this one is just your standard uh, factory finish from CFX, and that's the gloss one. So that's pretty cool. And so you touched on earlier during our uh, experimentation. Yeah. You come up with a pretty cool concept. Well, you know, these people are asking questions, so we gotta we gotta pick on our feet a little bit. forward thing. I love that's it. That's it. So Chris came up with the idea. Let's put shrink tubing over top of. So obviously we've got our finished grip. Yep. We took shrink tubing, put over top of this. And this is the same shrink tubing that we've got. And used we applied the shrink tubing exact like right after we put the sleeve over top. Right. Put the sleeve over top. We uh, stretched it out. We formed it to the grip. We put the hose clamps on just as you saw us do with that one, and then immediately we came right over. Yep. And then we let it cure overnight. Yep. We come back the next day. We took off the string tubing. And let's get a close up of this. You can probably actually see it. Yeah. Um, you almost get the same effect as, as you if. Compare it to yeah, that. Careful, as, that's got. Oh. Yeah. It's almost the same effect as if you would have put a top coat on it, but without the finish. Yeah. It, or the epoxy. It has less it's, texture. It's. You can barely. It's a lot smoother yeah. than, than this one we just did. And. In a sense, what it is, is it's like if you were to take, like when they make carbon fiber parts, they will actually take and they will vacuum out the leftover resin. Mm -hmm. So what that does is that makes an absolutely perfect resin to cloth ratio from uh, optimal strength. And it also pulls some of it out and gets rid of added weight. So really all that did is that helps bring as much of the epoxy to the surface, and then what it does is because it's fully wetted, um, it's going to be smoother on the outside because you're actually going to get a little bit of that epoxy through it. Yeah. It's not going to be glossy, it's not going to look like that because that is actually a top coat finish. It's just because the epoxy came through completely and fully uh, it's like it coated it all the perfect. fibers and right. it got all the fibers, smooth. not just like halfway. Yeah. So it's a cool effect. Yeah, well done. and then you can literally take it and just peel this off. This is no like camera tricks or anything. So you can actually take it and peel it off. So you can see it just unrolling there. So and then all you will do is you'll pull that back. You'll pull your clamps off. You'll cut it. Cut it and you'll. You ready to go? Done. Ready to build with it. So that's a great option for uh, when the guys are asking about the SK2 seats, uh, when they're asking about, you know, well, I want one that's longer or shorter than what they offer from the factory. So that's well, and also you mentioned to you earlier when you were talking, you can take the pre formed grips they have, you know, say they make an 11 and an 8 and you want a 9.5 or you want a 6, you can take their grips, you know, do almost the same effect, you know, put it on a mandrel. Right. Put, put it either a um, power app or a drill right, or, or a lathe. Or the lathe. Yep. And you can you can manipulate these grips, cut them to whatever lengths you want to. Yep. And you can also, we didn't, we didn't talk about too much, but you can make tenons as well. If right. I make a grip like we just did, which one is it? This is the level. <clears throat> After you're finished with it, you know, take it off and you can either use sandpaper um, or the razor blade, you know, in comparison. Right. And you can make your own tenons as well. For sure. So, um, James had a question, does the tubing stick to the resin? This did not. This was the uh, shrink tubing that we have here in the back warehouse, and I literally just went back there, cut a piece, pulled exactly what we needed, and was like, well, let's give it a shot. Because <laughs> if it's, if it's going to stick, we'll know, but it, it does not stick to it. So this does not have any special prep. We did not put any release agent on this, nothing. We literally took the heat shrink tubing from the back, we put it on here, we used the heat gun, applied it, and set it, set it down. That's it. So, yep. Mark is asking about an inlet on a fly handle. Oh, I'm not sure about that one. You could definitely do it, what would you use though? <laughs> what it's going to be is I would use, I would do two things. Um, I would start by getting it reamed to where it needs to be, but you're going to need, we've got a thing called a crafty cutter here, and we use it to inlet fly grips. Now, the only issue with using the crafty cutter and then using the carbon fiber is I would actually take and actually cut 
this inner ring out. That inner ring has a pretty good amount of epoxy in it. I would actually take and take a razor knife and cut it like that. So just like you can cut the grip in half, you can cut it around like that. <clears throat> You're gonna need to arbor that. So the Crafty Cutter has a bore in it that fits in a 250, but this is not 250, this is 3.8, so this is 375. So you're gonna to need to create an arbor and then you can go at it with a Crafty Cutter. The other option is a Dremel. I, uh, a Dremel is like the best $50 I've ever spent in my whole life. So what I would do is I would try to get rid of this epoxy ring that's on here and then I would try to mark it off and I would use a Dremel and I would go slow because the inner core is considerably softer than the outer skin. So you're really going to want to work on the outer skin before you start boring into the inner core. So if I was going to do an inlet on a fly grip, I would take a Dremel or even a, or even like a drill with maybe like a 16th drill bit and drill small pilot holes maybe at like 12 and six and three and nine, do that and then connect the dots with a Dremel tool because what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you a better consistent hole. Um, that's just me thinking through it, honestly. That's, that's, okay. how I would, that's how I would first attack it because you know, unfortunately you're not gonna be able to attack it with a drill bit or, or things like that because a drill bit is, is consistent, right? So it's just, going to be one of those deals. Yeah. So, so again, we have the, the CFX, we have this kit, 25% off. Yep. That's going to be part of our Halloween sale. That is. But we also have some brand new handle kits. Handle kits. Some right. spinning handle kits. So here you go. So Try we got this. what, our core composite, we got our CFX. We got WIM. WIM. So you can go on these are multi-option, you can pick whichever one Absolutely. you want. Absolutely. Not multi-option, but we have a well, ton of options available. Yeah, they are multi-option because you can do various, you know, Fore grips, rear grips. You can do different. Uh, you can do different real seats and, and things like that. Yeah. So well, we also have that's a special it. guest. Tonight. Oh my wow. goodness! Speaking of Halloween, hey, we got John Cox wow. in the building. John Cox is here, guys. <laughs> so this, and this is like a Halloween thing, right? Sure. What are you trick or treating as yourself? Is that what we are? Is? I mean, you know, kind of a big deal. Kind yeah. of a big deal. So um, I'm going around local neighborhoods, passing out our new. Handle kits that that's we have where, to that's offer. Where you got it from. That's a great. Choice. It is the uh, these, these carbon kits are actually the handles that I use in my pro kits. Wow, awesome! And they are sharp. The hair are good. So now my question is: When you're collecting candy, are you having the people put the candy in your FLW cup that you want? I absolutely am. I bring that thing everywhere. Okay, but you you drank the slushy out of it. And oh, now you're I just getting the slushy out of it. Tootsie rolls and all kinds of just oh, it's, skittles. It's filled to the brim with all kinds of great junk food. That's fantastic. <laughs> cool. All right. all right. John Cox, everybody. Hey, boys. Good luck next year. Appreciate we'll see you. you soon. You guys are killing it. So Thanks for that. Right on. All right. Cool. So anyway, speaking of Halloween, got a good Halloween sale we going do. on. Halloween sales come up very soon. Absolutely. So speaking of the fly grips, we've got. 50% off American Tackle Bushido fly kits. So what we did is uh, the great guys over at American Tackle, they got with us and we were putting their fly kits on sale, 50% off, and that is going to be a six, a seven, and an eight weight. Right. And we've got really everything you need. Oh, yeah. We've got a killer aluminum seat. We've got a great full wells grip, fighting butt, uh, the, the uh, Bushido fly blanks, which are a big hit. Uh, we got them 50% off, which doesn't happen often. So that's going to be something you need to oh, yeah. jump on. What else we got? So also we got, in the spirit of Halloween, we have 25% off some of our select orange blanks. Okay. And also 25% off our metallic copper MHX blanks. Yeah, now those are sweet. They are. They're very awesome. sharp, like you said. It's sharp. It's sharp. Cool. And to help you build on your Bushido uh, kits and also the orange... IS blanks and the metallic copper. We've got your CRB Pro Paste and your Pro Code is going to be 25%. Yeah. We also have a new item that just came out a few weeks ago. And what is it? MHX rod sleeves. All right. Let's, let's pull one out over there. Okay, so these are color coded. So this is the high mod version, black and gold. Yeah. And uh, and I've got the regular, famous black and green. 
I mean, I'm not gonna lie; these are some of the best rods that we're marking out, and I'm gonna brag about it. So we did really good with these. Absolutely. So they've got the bell on here that is actually hook resistant, mm -hmm. and you know as well as I do, we test them. Yes. And this right here, you want to try to stick a rattle trap through there, uh -huh. some uh, some KVD wide grips or something. No. It's not gonna happen. Plus, the mesh on this is considerably tighter than just any generic rod sleeve that, that you'll see. Plus, the end is a heat shrink, and it also has an MHX label on it. Uh, it's also going to give your length. Yep. Now, when you're looking at what length to buy, if you go to the rod sleeve link on our website, you will see that... Yes, it says that it's for a 6'6", but we also list the exact length of the sleeve. So depending on if you've got you know, a jerkbait rod or you've got a rod with a longer handle or a shorter, shorter handle, and you want, maybe you don't want this sleeve to go all the way to your reel, you'll know exactly the length of this rather than just seeing that it's 6 feet 6 inches. Exactly. So, yep. And so the orange place we talked about, this is the IS plank. Ooh, those are orange. Orange, 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 and then also our S class cranking blanks, which are, I believe, in the caramel color. Yeah, and now see, that's transparent glass. Transparent, yes, that's pretty sure. So the, these were actually revamped just a few months back. I'm gonna leave them with our boy over here. Those are really sweet. You guys yeah, like the uh, that's the Jay Keaton special yes. right there. Awesome, cool. What else? Now you're drinking out of a sale item, MHX assemblers, 50% yeah. off. Holding the uh, no. 25% off the tumbler, right? Those oh, wow, 50% off. 50% off the tumblers. They hold a lot of ice cold water right yes. there. Awesome. A lot of water. Cool, that'll work. Um, all right, we're gonna give away some kits. And as most of you loyal followers know, we need to do like and share this post, and that's how you get entered in the giveaway. Now, new, we are live on Instagram as well. So yes. we're live on Facebook here, we're live on Instagram there. And go to our recent Instagram post. Today. A few hours. Today. No, few well, hours yeah. Maybe. About an hour and a half ago. <clears throat> tag two friends in it. So tag two friends in it. We're going to pick two winners from Instagram and two winners from Facebook. Yeah. And we'll, we'll do it. that tomorrow morning. You're right. going to be responsible. Oh, okay. No. no. <laughs> I know that. Yeah, I know that. Too much, too much. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, so um, is that it? I think we've covered everything. There's a lot going on. Halloween sale. We got giveaways, CFX. Now, as always, if you've got any other questions and we didn't get to you live on the air, please comment in here. We've got uh, guys working in the back. They're throwing in links. They're answering questions. Hunter's going to jump on there tomorrow morning. I'm going to jump on there tomorrow morning and make sure that we answer all of your questions. Uh, so send them into Facebook um, or just comment below. We'll definitely get back to you. We don't oh, yeah. comments. No, we, we really don't. So I think that's that's about it. And to end the show, as always, Power Tools, sponsored by Benford. <laughs> Tim the Tool Man Taylor. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank and again, you guys. If you got any questions, please hit us up. We'll see you next time. Awesome.